Okay, everyone, we are live on Facebook tonight, January 19th, 2021. And we will be talking about stamping on glass with color concentrates and designers. Hi there, guys. How are you tonight? Okay, we had some interest on uh, stamping on glass. So I wanted to uh, come on and talk about that this evening. So like I said, we had some interest in uh, doing the stamping on glass. Um, so I wanted to come on and show you that this evening. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways, a couple of ways that you can color also. Um, so for those of you that don't know, um, which I should be doing this every time I do it, um, my name is Paula McCoy, and I am the owner of Colors for Earth. And so tonight we're going to show you how to stamp on glass using our color concentrates, which are also called CCs and we refer to them as CC enhancers in the uh, glass world. They are just color concentrates for the ceramic people. They are a translucent underglaze made <clears throat> to go on greenware and disc for ceramic and pottery. But um, a probably four or five years ago, I've used them pretty much since 2008 on glass, but uh, four or five years ago, we decided to start using them a little more and then a Two years ago, Debbie Elmer came out with what we call the ink technique. And don't confuse that with alcohol inks because it's not the same. We're actually using the concentrates in an ink fashion with stamping with them and then decorating. So I'm gonna show you uh, a few of those type of techniques, okay? So it looks like we've got 19 or so on. So I'm gonna switch to my overhead camera, okay? The uh, background that you see behind me is done with stamping uh, with the black, CC Black, CC 101, and then I filled in using other CCs. They do have to be capped with clear glass. Well, not necessarily clear, but they have to be capped with glass, whether it's another sheet of glass or it's frit that is sifted on there. And I'm gonna show you that tonight. Do not let me forget that. At the end, I will show you how we sift over the top. If you're trying to do maybe jewelry where you want to keep it lightweight and you want to do just one piece, or um, you could always use two pieces of two millimeter to do jewelry also. You can make part sheets with this and then cut it up, fire it, cut it up, and then add it to other things, okay? So let's go to um, my full screen, okay? So you can see this is the piece that I had behind me. So this is stamped onto the glass and let me show you. So like this is uh, the stamp that's over here in the corner, okay? So you can see how I started with the black and then I've embellished because there's extra lines. I've added other lines in between. So I'm gonna show you some of those different tri tricks and tips, okay? Um, if I tilt this, I don't know whether you can see. Yes, is there a question? Better? Okay, it's a little dark on one side. We'll adjust it. I got some new lights. I'm trying out some different things. So trying to get the best view for you. So on this piece, there are there is some texture to it. And I'm not sure it's going to show up. Let me just see if I can get it close enough. See the center of that dot in the middle? You can see that it looks textured. So I put the frit over it, but it could use a little bit more. Uh, if this was going to be a serving tray and you were going to serve food on it where particles or liquid, I would definitely uh, cap it. What I did was work on white glass here, and then I just added um, a sheet of clear behind it so that I had six millimeters. Okay, so it was two, three millimeter pieces. And then on these pieces, I worked on white here and then I backed it with a green, okay? So I just chose to bring out some of the green color concentrates in the background. And then you can see on these, I've got some, this one has a, these have transparent glass. You can actually see through that glass, okay? And then I did some stroke work. So there's quite a few different ways that we can go about doing this, okay? So I'm gonna move these out of the way. And what I've done is I've stamped on a piece here this is using uh, one of my stamps that I created. It's called a doodle stamp. Uh, it's just a doodle flower is what it is. And you can find that on the website. 
the website is listed at the top of the screen, okay, www.colorsforearth.com. And you can find all these materials there uh, to do your decorating, okay? So here I've already got one stamped, but I'm gonna show you the stamping process uh, to start with. All right, so I liked, I'm gonna put down a paper towel just to protect uh, my surface here from getting black all over it, okay? And then here is a sheet of glass. This is white opal and I use 96 COE. Okay, and I'm gonna, so what I usually do is I like to cut and it's really great for coaster size, which is what I've done on this guy here. It's just a transparent glass underneath the white opal on the top. Okay, so for this one here, um, I've got, you know, you can make it as large or as small as you want. See, I've cut it just a little bit larger and it creates what I call a frame around that piece. Okay, so all you're using that one for your backing is just to put behind it when you fire. All right, so let's pick out a stamp. Um, we have all different types of stamps on the website. And let me show you, and you can uh, find those if you just type in stamps. So they come, uh, you see a hang tag, it shows you the image. Um, it tells you uh, how to clean them. I prefer to clean these off with alcohol or with vinegar because when they're made, they might have a little bit of a residue on there. So um, I would definitely clean them, okay? So there's just some different ones. There's hearts. We have some holiday ones, some bells, and all different types of square trees, all different types of them on there. So you can find all of those on the website. They average $14.99 each. Um, there's a couple that are a little more just because uh, they have two stamps in it, or uh, they're, they have like eight in it with, with little squares. Okay, so here is like a small square that I did. And these were just on white and then I capped them with clear. I did sift clear powdered frit between, okay? So there's a couple more examples for you. All right, so uh, let's see. Let's do one that's on one of them so that you see it. Okay, so what I've got here is my color. And we sell these roller sponges. There's three sizes in a package. Okay, now when you push down on them, you have to be careful you don't push down so far that you end up putting that um, plastic part rubbing against your glass because it is going to uh, take away your image, okay? I think those are $5.99 for the pack of three, and they're great for putting on the color. So here's your color concentrate, CC 101, cobalt black. This is a translucent underglaze normally used on ceramics, but we use them on the glass to stamp with. We also use the designers, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit, but we're going to start with this one uh, with the black. So you have to shake these well, Okay, you can hear that. They are in a gel base. They're a pigment suspended in a gel. So as they sit still, they congeal and you need to shake them up to disperse. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, so I just put it in a little palette here and uh, they're doing it again. Okay, so roll the sponge, get it completely loaded. Sorry about that, guys. And then I like to just lay it down to start covering. And you just, you're just kind of moving it across the top. I'm not pushing down. I'm just allowing that color to touch the top surface. And I'm coating it well. And I'm pushing this down because it kind of has a little bit of a bump in the center of it. Now, sometimes what I do is I go over it multiple times, make sure it looks wet and coated. And then sometimes you may have to let this set for 30 seconds before you do it. Okay, so I don't know if you can see them, see how glossy that is. So it's wet. Okay, normally I stand above and then uh, do my stamp, but I'm just going to sit and do it. Okay. 
So just center it over the area, let it set down, and then gently give it some tap and just make sure all of the stamp is touching the glass. And then lift straight up and you have an image. You can, these have a rubber backing. You can drop these in a bowl of water and go back later. It's not gonna come off of there. So that's kind of nice. You can just dip it in your water and go. Now, see where the image did not quite get down there? Okay, so I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'm gonna put out some more color concentrate here. Bert, do we have any questions? Okay. Not yet. All right, so then I'm going to grab my quill pen. Uh, we sell the quill pens on the website. They're $8.95. They come with two different nibs, a 512 and a 99, and both of them are right there in the package. Okay, there's a silver one and kind of a coppery color one. So a lot of people think there's only one in there, but when you open that up, they're just stuck together. Okay, so be sure and look at that. Um, we have the little jars. We started carrying those to put the concentrates in. Um, tonight, I'm just going to dip it here in my little paint well and show you. Hopefully, I can. You need something shallow, okay? And you need enough of it in there that you can dip your pen because I'm going to touch up this line here, okay? So I'm going to just go into it and kind of, I'll have to do it a couple of times. Let me... Just do it on the back of this one and just make sure it's going. Okay, so dip and I kind of drag off, make sure there's not a bubble in liquid there because we had some people that were asking um, as far as the consistency. I touch to the glass and go slowly to kind of open those teeth. So on the base of the nib of the pen, there are teeth. And let me show you what that is. Can you see how it spreads apart there? You may not be able to see it. Let me wipe it off a little bit. So see how the teeth open up? And that is what's flowing your product down, okay? So you have to have enough product on there that when you touch the glass, you kind of open that tooth up and then start the flow. Sometimes you gotta load two or three times to get it going. And you can't go forever, okay? Um, you're going to have to load it every half inch or so. It's not like ink, ink, where it's really, really runny. If you need to thin the product down, you can add a drop of water, stir that up, clean off. If you're stirring it with your uh, quill, clean it off and then start over again and fill it. Okay, so this is just another way that you can come back and add lines if you miss something, okay? How many we got, Bert, out there? Okay, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. Tell me where you're from. And uh, Bert will read the questions to me and we'll answer those. I will go back at the end of this Facebook Live and uh, key in answers in case you're watching this later at another time, okay? So there's how you stamp. You just roller. We can do another one. So this one is the same as this one here. So you don't have to have it completely. It can run off the glass. You can see on this one here where I've just used the center of a stamp. So um, create yourself a part, what we call a part sheet if you need to, okay? Let me grab another one. Whoever is asking is that the finest one. Uh, actually, the uh, 99, this is the 512 that I'm using, which is the larger of the two. So no, the 99 is the smaller one. But you know what? I use this one for everything. I don't even switch to the smaller one 99% of the time. Okay. So, okay, here's another, here's a square stamp. So let's, I'm just going to set that there. I'm going to just roll it again just to kind of rework my sponge roll over the stamp just gently you don't want to push down too much because you're going to end up uh, squeezing the color down into the different uh, areas or the design 
and then you've got a black glob. So these just uh, clean up with water. I usually take mine to the kitchen sink where I have a sprayer and just spray them really well. And then I leave them upside down to dry. That way nothing is in the crevices of the stamp. And by the way, Luann, your prize from last week went out today. You should have tracking in your email. Uh, so comment on the video and at the end, uh, my husband, Bert, that's watching, he will spin the comments and we will pick a winner for some of these items that I'm doing. Once I get them finished, uh, you could win a finished piece. Okay. Now, another way you can do this is you can put the stamp down. I kind of like this better. And then you can center your glass over it, wherever you want it. And then just gentle pressure. And that might work better for you. So try a couple of different ways and see. Now, of course, what you've got now is you've got a stamp that's stuck to it. So I'm going to grab it by my hand and I'm going to lift up. Okay. Pretty cool. So you can see that that's still glossy. Um, I would still coat it again if I were going to do another stamping of it. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside. I'll wash that later. And then we'll let that one set aside. All right, so let's go back to the quill pen. Question, Bert? Okay. He's laughing over there. Somebody must be saying something. Well done. Den Larson? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Tell me where you're from. Like I said, uh, put something in the chat. That way you have a chance at winning one of these finished little pieces. These are just smaller pieces that I'm demoing on. Okay, so on this one, I had um, three different colors of the ceruleans. Um, I don't have all of those out here, but let's, so the, I'm going to use CC150 uh, light cerulean. And I think I have deep cerulean over there. And all I'm going to do is put this in a paint well. I just need enough. That's enough for an army. And I'm going to show you how easy this is to decorate. You can do decorations with a brush. You can do it with a quill. You can do it with our dotting tools. Uh, the dotting tools are here. There's two of them. So these are like a stylus or dotting tool. So they're different size balls on the end of them. And they just pick up more product, okay? So if I wanted to take the larger, the these come in a set of three and I couldn't find my other one, I apologize. So I'm gonna just stir up that color to make sure it's really loose. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off that tip. And then I'm gonna just grab some of the cerulean. This is light cerulean. I'm gonna fill in that dot and it's done. Is that amazing? That's how simple it is to decorate. Okay, so if I wanted to do every other uh, section, I can come in here with that same stylus. And the question is, would it be easier if you could see a side camera? I think it would, if you can tell exactly. Rena Heath would like to know how long can you leave the ink on the stamps before they have to be washed off? Um, you know, normally I wash them right away, but I have done two or three stampings with it and it's absolutely fine. Um, I wouldn't leave it overnight. It's really not going to stick on there. It's not like acrylics this is a fired product so it's um it's a little bit easier to come off of there all right so let me switch so you can see now i've got my side camera up so what i want you to do is see how i'm loading that dotting tool and how i'm going to apply the color so i can just sit it down and just kind of work it back and forth until I fill in that area. Sit it down, work it back and forth. So the stamp acts as a barrier. I'm gonna to switch to the smaller one so that I don't go outside my lines. Now, of course, when you go to the smaller, you're gonna to have to load more often. So all I'm doing is putting down a small amount of color and just moving it around into that space. 
Okay. Any questions, Bert? No. Okay, no questions. All right, so I'm working on 96 COE. It's nice and flat. Now, those of you that are 90 users, um, one side of your glass is a little bit um, smoother than the others. If you're going to do a lot of stamping, I might pre-fire that just hot enough that it's going to flatten out. That would be my personal uh, preference. So then I'm going into the next one and I'm adding my second color. Okay. And this can be done with um, the CCs, which is what I'm using. This is CC 152 Deep Cerulean. And I shook it up really well before I started. I did not add any water to this. I didn't add any water to uh, the black when I stamped with it. I didn't add any water to the black to use with the quill pen. Now, if you shake that jar or the bottle well enough, you will agitate the color enough that it will be liquefied. You shouldn't, unless you've just had it for years and years and years, and maybe you had it in the heat um, we, I would recommend keeping your products in a controlled temperature environment. Uh, you know, don't leave it out in your trunk in the Texas sun is what I'm saying, or California sun. Okay. All right. So you see how easy that is? Anybody can do this. This is probably a good beginner starter project. And if you're a ceramic person and you're wanting to do glass, um, this would be an easy thing to do if you've already got the product. You just need to get you some glass and there's all different types of places to purchase glass. There are studios that carry our products. They're on our website at the very bottom. You can, um, it says CFE teachers and studios and then you go by state and you can find someone that carries our products. Okay, well. You got a question? Yeah, Lauren Lindsay wants to know why a dotting tool and not a paintbrush. You can do either. So um, it just depends on what is easier for you. Some people shake really well, uh, really well. That didn't come out right. They shake a lot. So sometimes using the dotting tool is easier. It's more like a pen or a pencil. Can you use a brush? Absolutely. I've got one here for you, Lori. Okay. So same thing. Grab your product on your brush. Now, the, the disadvantage to the brush is you're probably going to brush it on and um, let me go a little bit, whoops, that's not gonna work. There we go, a little bit closer. When you brush it, Lori, what happens is you end up thinning the product out and I don't have that problem. See with the, see it's hard to get a solid and you can't really flood these on like you do uh, your enamels, okay? So that's the reason I don't use a brush. Now. Can I do a brush stroke? Absolutely. Um, so if I've got another piece here. So if I were going to let me get that brush fully loaded, if I were going to do a brush stroke, I could come in here and do stroke work with those CCs. Okay. And that's fine, but I'm looking for a more solid and opaque look. So I'm going to use either the quill pen and I can grab it and show you that also. So I'm gonna get, get enough on the pen here. That's the disadvantage of these little wells, trying to get enough on there. And there again, you need to start the flow of it. And because it's, it's doing a little bit of a flooding for you, I like to use the pen uh, to do more of the outer design work and I'll show you some of that. So yes, you can use whatever tool you want to fill in that area. Just remember you're not flooding like with your glass enamels. Okay, you, this is a color concentrate. It is not food safe. It's a non-enamel, a non-enamel. So it has to be capped, meaning you have to cover it with glass, whether it be a sheet of glass or you sift. So I'm going to go back over this one that I did a brush on and just see if I can make it a little more consistent with the color application. 
Okay, so you would just go around and just fill in every other one or whatever pattern, you know, you want to come up with. Um, you could do rainbow colors, you know. So we have different kits of the color concentrates. And let me show you one of those. So this is um, kit number one. So this has your primary colors in it. Okay, you get 14 colors and they are the one ounce size. We do have a kit, we have kits for all, we have three different ones, one, number one, two, and three. Uh, this is one ounce, this is two ounce. So even if you buy the one ounce and they are still on sale, guys, I left them on sale. They are $10 off each kit. If you need them, need stock, I would buy them right now because I'll probably take those off by the end of the week. Um, I would buy a, a larger black because you're going to probably use the black the most as far as doing your outline, okay? So then you could just come back and pick up that light blue and fill in that area. So any other questions on how to apply it? So you can apply it with a brush, the dotting tool, the quill pen. Do, yes. Do your bottles of CCs have tips that fit? Ooh, that's a good. Yes, Luann. We have what's called the cap kit, cap tip kit. Um, it comes with all four different, let me dig out some tips real quick. I wasn't preparing. We get, you get two caps in there. Um, they have closures on them, which are, um, hold on a second. She caught me off guard here. I got my little stash. Okay, so they come with little caps on them, okay? And there's all different types of sizes as far as the tips, there's four different. The black bent tip is the one that I would use if I were doing writing, okay? And so let me show you. All you're gonna do is, that's a great question. Thank you, Luann. Um, take off your cap. This red cap fits any of my one or two ounce bottles. Doesn't matter what the product is. Then you attach that tip with a half a turn. Don't tighten it any more than that because righty tighty, lefty loosey. If you tighten it anymore, you'll never get it off of there, okay? When you're using it like that, what I want you to make sure you do is you get you a piece of paper towel and wet one corner of it because you need to keep that tip in that moist towel to keep it from clogging, okay? So let's say, um, I'll use this one here, that I want to fill in. I'm not sure I'd fill with this. I'd probably do more like doodling or zentangling, but I mean, you could, I'm gonna test it here though on the paper towel first, make sure it's coming out, okay? And then let's say that you want to fill in that little dot. Look how easy that is. Now you don't want it. It's not supposed to be a stand-up product. This just needs to be flat and flush with the glass. Am I still on camera, Bert? Yep. Okay. So you could come in here and you could fill in with that if you wanted to. Just be careful because if you scrape some of your stamp up into the tip, these are really super, super fine and they're going to clog. But I'll show you how to clean those also. So yes, you can do that. Now, you can also, um, let's say that you wanted like a wavy edge to this. You can come in here and you can add. Um, you could uh, bring out lines. Let's bring this one over. So, I mean, there's so many things. And then you could, you know, you could come in here and you can add dots. So there's so many things you can do that. The other thing that you can do is, it kind of looks like a feather. Um, you can write your name with it. Do that. Ben wants to see me write something with it. He wants to see me write, like my name. Just says, write something with the tip, please. Okay, there you go, Den. I was one step, half a, eight seconds ahead of you. 
before you could see me doing it, I was doing it. There's a little bit of a delay on the uh, screen and I'm not seeing, everything's still good. I'm not seeing a live feed. Yeah, you're fine. Okay, all right. So did you see how I did the writing? So, um, you know, if you wanted to. Is that a bottle of your regular CC? Yes, this is just the color concentrate CC 101. So this cap will fit either bottle, one or two ounce, but it's easier to hold that. This is the same bottle we use as the piping bottles that we put the paste in. Okay, so I find it easier to hold this one than it would be to hold this large one and try to squeeze. Um, but I've had carpal tunnel, so you may you may like the larger one. We do have half ounce and we have uh, one ounce. You can always take and put the color in another bottle if you wanted to. So, I mean, there's all different kinds of things you can do. See there, you can come back and you can add. Yes, question? Uh, Luann says, would you hold the written piece up to the camera? Sure. The written part up to the camera, please. All right, Luann, there you go. Let's turn this so you can read. Okay, so I am turning the bottle and when I'm down here, I'm laying that at an angle. So I'm not standing over it. The tip is touching the glass and then I start squeezing to start working. Peggy wants to know, do the tips come with the kit or are they separate? The, there's one on the website called Cap Kit, and that comes with two of the red caps, all four tips, and it comes with the plunger to clean the tips and a little green Q-tip like looking thing. Um, these same cap and kit, cap and tips come with our piping bottles. So even if you had wanted a piping bottle and you wanted to put color in it as opposed to put it on your bottle, I don't know why you would, but you can do that. So these caps just come off. I took my black one off and I put the red one on. Okay. Did that work holding it up, Luann? Is that what she? Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, good, good. So yeah, you can just come in here and do any kind of little zentangle or I call this my Corneli lace. They do it on cakes and it's just one continuous line. Now it's starting to kind of get smaller. So I'm going to touch my damp paper towel just because I feel like it was starting to clog. And a lot of it's because I'm pushing backwards. Okay, so you can write, you can doodle. Um, if you go slower, you get a thicker line. If you move faster, you get a thin line. So, I mean, you can come in and do dashes, or, like I said, dots, whatever. And as long as you have a consistency on squeezing the bottle, you should end up with the same size dots. Okay. Oh, hi, Miss Karen. <laughs> okay, so let me show you how to clean this while we've got this. And I have a dirty water bowl. I use my water bowl all the time. Sorry about that. Okay, so I took the cap off and I took the tip. I'm going to just drop this cap in my water. I can come back and clean that later. It's not going to hurt that to be in there. So I have my plunger and I'm going to, should I go back to the other? No. Okay. And then I'm just going to squirt out. It's a little tight. So there's probably something in there. You'll find out as you're pulling water up in it, back and forth, when it, when it flows freely, then you know you've got that little chunk or whatever might have dried on the inside. It's a very fine tip. These are stainless steel tips. You can drop them in your water and you can come back later and clean them, okay? They're not going to be damaged, which is really nice, okay? So that's how you clean those. So let's go back to, um, let me show you this one. So do you see, so this stamp is just kind of this little tapered um, stamp. All of this is done. Yes, question? Oh, um, all of this is done with the quill pen. And then I use the dotting tool to do some of the green. I want to make sure I'm on camera. Okay. Um, so we can do that too. I'll show you. 
So like here on this one that I was just working on, all of these dots, and some of you may not know this. Let me explain that before I move on. I want to show you so many things and then I forget. So in case you don't know, I'm going to use the handle of a brush and I'm going to grab some of my deep cerulean. When you load whatever tool you're using and you use it for a dot, if you continually dot, the dots get smaller. If you load every time, the dots should be the same size. So like I did on this one, I went one, two, three, four, five, six. So the more you dot, there's less product on your brush handle or your dotting tool, whichever one you're using. I switched the brush handle because I knew I wanted a larger uh, dot than what I could get with that tool. You can use the end of your dotting tool. Question? Uh, ben wants to know how did you shade the pink? How did I shade the pink on this one, Dan? That must be what he's talking about. Okay, so this was brush stroked on is what that was. Okay, so I've got one here. Jumping back and forth, sorry. And we do have a DVD that uh, we did with Debbie and her full technique. Um, about the ink technique, but I wanted to show you uh, just some stamping, okay? So let's say that I want to uh, stroke in one of these colors. All right, so I don't know that I can do it in these small areas. It would just be a lighter application then Okay, so what it is, is a larger brush, not that one, let me grab a round. So I'm using, uh, this is our 500 uh, Bavarian round size three, always dampen your brush first and blot out the moisture. I'm just gonna go right over the top of this piece so you can kind of see. So I'm loading the brush, it's like shampooing your hair, fully loading, shaping it to a point. And then I generally start at the middle and I press down, pull, pull, pull and lift. So that's how it got more translucent is because I was pressing down on the brush. I wasn't flooding it with the um, quill pen or with the dotting tool. I just brush stroked that on there. Okay, so that's why it is thinner. So I could do the same thing in here. I could brush on and then I would have to use another stroke to fill that in and it would be more translucent or transparent. Just if you're brushing, make sure that you try to smooth out those strokes because pretty much what you see is what you're gonna get with this. Okay, question? Nope. All right, cool. got, it. got it, okay. All right, so I'll just, yeah. So you can see how you can just come in with a brush and make that translucent. Now. You could do the same thing like I'm doing, but do it on bisque if you're a, a ceramic person. And actually, you're going to get a more solid outline because um, the ceramic bisque absorbs the product and you'll get more of a crisp line where the glass is not porous where ceramic is. And so therefore, you get more of a transparent. Yes. Who wants to know the one with the paint? What stamp is that? Oh, I knew somebody's going to ask me something like that. Um, so this one, the pinwheel, I think it's called pinwheel. If you just type in pinwheel at the top, the stamps are under the fired arts section, fired arts supply, and then down to stamps. Okay, so you can find those there. Um, I don't have that one out or I would tell you exactly what it is. A lot of mine, I have them you know, written on the back, what number they are. So this is number 40. These are ST and then the number. So that was the one that I used earlier. Okay. Um, you can also take, um, like I did on this one here, and you can take your Sumi brushes and you can kind of thin down some product and put a wash in the background. So let me... 
Let's see. Mm-hmm. She'll find it. Yeah, I think it's called Pinwheel, if I remember right. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Okay, so I'm going to grab the uh, small sumi. And what I'm going to do, I think you can still see my palette, is mm-hmm. now I probably wouldn't leave this lane here. I would rinse this out when I was done, okay? It's going to get harder. The stamps are not hard to clean. It's the um, the material, you know, what you're using to apply it with. Question? Okay. All right, so the sumi brushes are a natural hair. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of water in one of my wells. And I would prefer you use distilled water when you're working with any of our fired products, only because different counties have different minerals in their water. And I know like Dallas County here in the Fort Worth, Dallas area uh, has a lot of calcium in it. And sometimes that doesn't mix uh, well with things. So if I wanted to use the lighter blue, I'm just going to bring that over here to that well of water. And I'm smooshing the brush down to completely mix that color with the water. Okay, so I'm pushing it down. Yes. Do you always use a brush for the wash or do you ever use a sponge? Um, so the question was, do I always use a brush to, to create the wash or could I use a sponge or do I use, I don't use a sponge because a sponge kind of lifts off some of the product and it will also give you texture, which you could do that if you want texture, that's fine. Um, but let me show you how this one, I always keep that stirred up because the color falls to the bottom. Water uh, color is heavier than the water. So you got to keep it stirred up as you're working. So all I'm going to do, and I have, I believe I did a video on this um, a long time ago. I may not have enough color in there. Just keep it stirred up and you can kind of just mush it. If you get too wet next to your stamping, um, it's going to start diluting and breaking down that stamp. So you got to be really careful. Now you can fire the stamp on. You can set the CCs at um, 1225. So you could put it in with a slump if you had a slump going. Now you have to still take them up to your full fuse and cap them. But if you wanted to set them, you could do that. So you could come back and work further on that piece. Okay, so you get the idea. And this is a little bit lighter color. And it really depends on how much color you put into that wash. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Just make sure it's not full strength when you're doing this because you'll see a lot of brush strokes and it's too heavy. Now, anytime you are, uh, I'm getting too close to the stamp, uh, firing, the color concentrates, you need to follow the firing schedule that I have out there for you. They are, um, you know, the binders need to move off, burn off. They are meant to go all the way up to 1915 degrees, 1830 for glaze, 1915 or so for uh, bisque firing. So they're meant to go hotter. So don't, uh, you can set them, but they have to go hotter and they have to be capped to be food safe because they are non-enamel, okay? So you can just kind of see how the wash can be put in there. You can also use your color concentrates on thin fire paper. And we've done, uh, I believe we had a live on that a uh, while back. So that gives you some ideas on how that's done, okay? All right, so let's go back over here real quick and go back to our quill pen. And let me grab the black here, get some of that. Now it's set here, so I'm gonna kind of mix it up real quick. If I needed to add a drop of water, I could. Question? Okay. Okay. Um, let me do a test to make sure it's gonna go for me. Yeah, it's a little thicker now. Okay. All right, so you could come in here and you could apply a 
a loop around the edge. And this is getting, it's set out here for a while. So it's pretty thick. So let's add a drop. I'm just going to dip my quill into my water bowl and then kind of stir that up. So it's not even a full drop. Okay. But you can get the idea that you can come out here and you can add any kind. I'm kind of shaking tonight, so I'm not doing the best job here. And I'm working backwards away from myself. So constantly load. I know we had someone asking um, about the thickness of the concentrate, they couldn't get it to come off the pen. So you really have to just keep loading, dipping, because um, you got to remember, it's going to dry on your uh, tip there. So don't think that you can just go on forever because you can't, okay? So you can keep doodling. You can see here, create a border. Um, on this one, you can see where I've come in and filled in different areas. Like the darker the color it is, it needs more frit. So this green, I'll hold it up to the camera. It almost looks, um, I think you could see it there, see the texture to that. So it needs more frit on it is what that's telling you. Okay, because this was the top piece. I added the transparent underneath. And so therefore, um, I didn't get enough frit over the top, the clear powdered frit. Okay. Any other questions? It's pretty easy uh, as far as you can't really go wrong, I don't think, with it. Um, you can come in and do brush strokes on there. You know, this one, I'm not sure I would stroke in there, but what might be fun to do on this guy is to go back to the deep cerulean because I've got light cerulean in the background and maybe I fill in this outside petal. Mm -hmm. Question? You just brought up an excellent point. Okay. I had not thought about it. your firing schedule for the CCs is probably different from some of the competitors schedules. True. Now you can always do some little test. Um, but what happens is because this is a ceramic product, you need to get that to burn off. So there's a lot of binders in it. It's meant to go to a higher temperature. Uh, there is no clay in it. It's just pure pigment in a gel. So that gel has to burn off. So look at my schedule that's out there. If you go to the color concentrate page, go down underneath uh, the CC enhancer page. It's inside the enamels and go down to the um, underneath the photographs and there's six or seven PDFs. I just showed somebody today where those were at. You can download all of those. There's videos on YouTube to support those different techniques. The only thing that really has changed since we started is we used to tell you you had to etch the glass before you could stamp. And that was when I was making as ink pad. You'll see the video that's out there with the fan brush and I'm stamping into the ink pad and then going to my surface. But ever since we started using the sponge rollers or these little pouncer, um, you don't have to etch anymore. We can get more product on there. And so um, you don't have to do that anymore. But definitely download that firing. It says Paula's firing schedule is what it's called. And download that and check it against some of your other. You might be able to um, get away with it, but there's some longer holds just to let everything burn out. And you need to sift between the glass, okay? If, or if you're just sifting clear over it, then that's all you need. But if you're capping it with clear, you definitely need to sift between. And I'm talking even on jewelry, even on little tiny pieces, because you have to leave it. Do you, I don't know if you understand what, um, when you're sifting over something, you're raising it off the surface, and then this piece is sitting up higher, okay? So you've got that airspace in between with all the little granules. Think of it as sand in there. And so the product, the binder in the product can burn out and kind of work its way to the outer edge. So I'm going to show you how I do my sifting. I sift over the top and then I go around the edge one more time and then I put the piece on top if I'm going to cap it. Okay. 
any questions on what I've done there? Nothing yet? Okay, so like on this one here, same thing, stamp it with the black. And then I came in with my little dotting tool and I colored in areas because I knew I had, I just was using some scrap glass that I had making some samples. Knew it was gonna be this, um, I don't even remember what that is, Amazon green maybe. Um, and then I did the wash in the background with the green and I just accented with uh, the 161 green leaf to make it semi-match, okay? So that's how I did that. Um, so when you've got, you know, this one has a lot of detail. So let's, um, let me show you real quick. So I'm using, uh, this time I've got green leaf. Okay, and then I wanna show you how you can stamp with uh, the designers before we get so let's say that we wanted this area here with the green. So look how easy that is to apply. Really simple. Okay, question? Yeah, Lindy Schneck wants to know, can I fire and slump in one fire? No, because it has to be capped to be food safe. So no, because you are you have to put sift clear over it or cap it with a clear. So you need to go um, with the 96 COE. I can get by with sometimes 1420 as my top temperature, um, but I like to go 1460. So no, you can't. Um, if you're just using it for jewelry or something, um, just sift a light coat over it and, and just, you know, whatever, if you're depending on, you've got one or two layers. So no, you cannot do that. And I know what you're talking about, because you're talking about another person that did a video recently and, uh, that's a different product, but this, remember this product was meant to go to 1900, uh, over 1900 degrees. Actually, it'll go to about 2030, um, on stoneware and porcelain also. So that's the reason uh, why you can't do it. it it's not going to mature. It's going to be a matte finish if you don't cap it, okay? And it is not food safe. But see how easy that is and how quick it can go? I mean, pretty simple. So you could uh, fire this to the 1225, and then you could cut it up and put it on other pieces or jewelry or whatever, and then come back and do your full fuse. And the unit is not for food, like the candle holder? Um, it would be fine on, on that at a little bit lower temperature, like 1380 uh, that we use to set the enamels. Now, what happens is um, if they scratch it, like with a knife, if, if it was on something you were going to cut with a knife, then it could scratch. Now it's going to take work to scratch it off, but it could be. Okay. I just want to make sure you understand that. All right. So let's. Can you use the color concentrates with the silk screen? Can you use the color concentrates with the silk screen? Yes, you can. And I, it depends on the color, whether it's thick or thin. I don't, I was not prepared for that. That's another. Uh, Tuesday Live. Um, you can thicken it with our thickener and use your finger to rouge through the silk screen and apply it. But yes, it can be. I did a piece um, at one of my retreats a couple uh, years ago where we did that. How long does it take for the stamped image to dry? It's pretty quick and you can put a fan on it. So three minutes, maybe, maybe not even that long. Okay, so I wanna show you that you can also stamp with the designer. So this is DZ201 Designer Black. And what I like to do with these, I like to use the round one and it's because I can dip my sponge in my color and then I can use my lid to kind of load my sponge and make sure it's worked in. So I cheat, it's just easier. And you've seen, I had them sitting here. So I like to do that. Uh, let me get us another stamp. <clears throat> sure. 
I had a small one out there. What did I do with it? <clears throat> okay. Oh, well. It is what it is. There we are. Okay. There we go. All right. So same thing. Whoops. Uh, you're going to load it. So I'm hardly putting any pressure. And I'm just going back over the area multiple times to make sure that the edge of the stamp is covered. You may have to turn your sponge. Maybe part of your sponge has more product on it than another part. And the nice thing about the designers is because we have some, and you can see how wet it is, okay? Because it's got that shiny look to it. And if I were gonna cover this whole thing with this stamp, I would start in the middle and then work myself out. Uh, this one comes with the little paisley and I could not find it. Uh, so this one, it's a two stamps in one package and it's $16.99 for that one. Um, I'm gonna kind of anchor my glass so it doesn't, there's a section so that I keep my glass still and I'm just gonna grab and lift. Now you can see that it's still glossy. Yes, question? What's the difference between designer and safety? Designer is a pure dry pigment that you can control the consistency. It is another non-enamel. I like it for stamping and for quill pen. It's easier to use the quill pen with it, and I'll show you that, than it is the CC. Because um, someone, you know, like I said, was asking about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this again, making sure I've got it all covered. And I'm just gonna put it out on a corner. Just tap it a little bit. You're not pushing so hard that you're scooting the sponge across. Okay, see in that cool. Yes. Question? Are the designers opaque? And are there any of your products that fire transparent? You can make anything transparent just by adding more medium or uh, with the color concentrates water. Anything that is, um, well, you can add water to the designers too. Uh, the enamels, you add the glass medium. Anytime you add water to a product, you start thinning down the color. If you add glass medium, if that's what the product is generally meant to be mixed with, you still retain the color, but it becomes more translucent. So water dilutes color medium just thins out but you retain the color does that make sense hopefully all right so i'm just going to stamp these corners and this will be a really cool looking piece now do you see that is a little crisper than what let me see if i can get both of those on there without messing it up i think i touched it um this was the cc's so it's a little lighter. The designers are going to be darker. They're going to be um, really vibrant and vivid. And I'll show you red in just a second, okay? So let me get this other corner on there just to give you some ideas on. I mean, you could just stamp with multiple colors. You wouldn't even have to color in. Now, designers, you cannot set and fire them. Once this is fired to any temperature, if it is not capped, you can wipe your finger across them and they're gonna come off because they are just powder that we're hydrating with the glass medium. So you just, you have to put something over them or you're in trouble, okay? Because I have charts out there for you um, and I don't have one uh, burnt. No, that's all right, Never mind. Okay. So you can see how dark that is compared CC's designers. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how easy it is. My little scrap here that we were working on. So these are the little ink jars that I was showing you earlier. 
Okay, they're just, they're not even a quarter of an ounce. They're very shallow, great for the quill pen. We either sell them in packages of six or you can buy them individually. Um, what I did earlier in the day was I rehydrated these with some glass medium. So even if they dry up, all you gotta do is stir and mix them up. I'm gonna add a little bit more. This is the GM 300 glass medium. And I mix this up about 6.30 tonight. And what time is it now? 8.30. So, um, and I left it open sitting there. So yeah. Luann wants to know, can you use them on this? Luann, I haven't tried that yet. I haven't got that far. These are a fairly new product. Give me some time and I will let you know. Um, I don't think they will work, but I'm not sure. I think they'll smear when you try to glaze them. Um, and there's nothing to bind them. There's no frit or anything in them. So um, I don't think it'll work, honestly. But let me try it, okay? Um, so what I'm doing is loading my quill pen. I want to show you how easy this is to, and I know we were just stamping, but this is part of the decoration. Do you see how red that is? And I'm going fairly slow. If you go really fast, oh, it worked naturally. Showing you on camera, it would work. Um, I like to go a little bit slower when I'm doing things. So if I'm writing my name, you've got to, you've got to have enough product up over that little oval in there. So I sometimes turn my uh, quill over. So basically that is your funnel and that's where everything is funneling down. And when you open those teeth at the bottom, that's when the color comes out. Okay, so I'm fanning it out so that you see, you get it started. So you're touching to the glass, open that up, get it started, and then it starts flowing. Okay, so you could do uh, curly cues. I mean, there's all different types of things you can do with it. Okay, so this is really nice with the quill. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, this is my preference, but you do have to cap it. Any other questions, Bart? What is the number of that color? <laughs> this color is Designer DZ211 Red. We have 16 colors. We have a pink. The pink is amazing. It's kind of a, it, it just, it comes out really, really nice and bright, which we don't have in anything. When you, because this is the packaging. This is a half ounce. We haven't an ounce. So you're getting powder in here. This is the pigment that we put in our CCs, our enamel. So that is why it's so strong and vivid. Okay. So here is the red brush stroked on. I was testing it. I did not sift between. You see those little bubbles? You get, you'll get bubbles even on your smaller pieces. So it comes in a half ounce or 14 grams or 28 grams an ounce. Um, we do have, and they are on sale, and we do have a kit that has uh, all 16 colors in that half ounce size. It's just the sampler pack and it's on sale also. So um, just had some orders today. Linda Malone Glover was doing some uh, pieces with it and posted on our board and it sparked a little interest. So I wanted to make sure that I definitely showed you. So that's the 11, okay? And the nice thing about any of our numbering system is the color concentrates. Do I need to switch cameras probably? Hold on one so second. The CCs have a 100 number series. The DZs have a 200. Okay, and then our glaze, everything. So if this last two numbers are the same, 43, and I do not have a CC 143. Let me see if I can find. Anyway, you get the idea that um, it's using the same pigment so you can mix and match things, okay? We have a really nice bright yellow. Um, I should have brought that chart. It's over behind you, Bert. Um, you wanna see if you can, it's on the designer's floor. He'll see if he can find it. Okay, so anyway, the numbering system. So the black 01 is uh, black, no matter if it's uh, designer black. 
Okay, so DZ201, CC101. So O1 is your key. It's the same pigment, just in a different base. Okay. Um, anyway, okay, so is there anything else you want to see? Um, I can go back here and decorate some more, but I wanted you to understand that you could use a brush, you can use uh, the dotting tools, you can use uh, the quill pen to do decorating with. And if I want to decorate with designers, I can come in here and grab that designer and decorate with it. And look at that red. Isn't that wonderful? It's beautiful. All right. And you can brush stroke with it. I did my hydrangea multi-layered piece. I took and brush stroked with these uh, pigments and they stay fairly opaque even in brush stroking. Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and hand it. Or if you wanna just pull a couple off of there and hand them to me. The pink is what I'm looking for. I wanted to show them the pink and maybe the red one is fine. So like I said, you can come in here and just decorate with both of these on the same piece. Okay. Because you're going to, they're Velcroed on that chip chart. You can just pull them. You got to gotta get a hold of it. They're on there pretty good. He's trying to get a couple of chips so you can see um, what they look like fired. Okay. All right, one second, and I'll grab those chips from him. Well, that's okay. Hold on one second, guys. Just one or two. That's fine. Did you get the pink? No, you didn't. The pink's down there. The very top. That's pink. <laughs> and do the white one. Yeah. Okay. He's trying to get those off of there. So here is um, the orange. Here's the red. So I did this on clear and the cement. I capped it with another piece of clear. Okay. And hold on, he's going to hand me the pink. All right. All right, so here is the pink one. And on this particular one, I sifted. I have an S on it. I sifted. So there is a little bit of texture on it. But um, there's the white. You can see it. So anyway, there's uh, 16 colors. Uh, the chart is out there. I put a chart in with your order. Um, and you can also download that too off the website. We do have what we call quick reference guides on the website also for the glass products. So if you're not familiar with that, um, there is a, um, on the menu of the enamels, it says quick reference guides and you can pull it down and print it off. So you can actually print our whole flyer. This is our glass flyer. We try to put those in all of your orders when we ship them, especially if you're a new person or if we've changed something. But these are the quick reference guides. They're printed on both sides, so make sure you turn them over. So uh, they tell you about the different products. So here's your sparkles and you can download these. But I do try to put have them put them in your orders whenever you're ordering particular products. So here's the color concentrates, how you can use them directly on the glass, how you can stamp with it, how you can use them with the thin fire paper, how you can use the rollers and through stencils. So all of those are out there and the firing schedule is there. If you want a thin a three millimeter result, can you just tap with clear powder? Yes. That's what I do 99% of the time is I, I'm going to show you how to sift, how I sift over it. So here's your um, bubble art. Let me, that's the wrong way. I did that every time. Um, your G-series, I give you examples. So these are, you know, really good things to have. You can download them on your computer, have them for reference. Here's talking about your designers, how I do brush strokes with them. I have a couple of webinars that I've done that you can still purchase and they're downloadable video files directly from the website. You do not have to wait anymore for me to send you that. So if you're in the middle of the night 
uh, doing things, you can download right away. So these are what I've been using, the color concentrates. So there's 41 colors um, in the line. So we have three kits, or we do have a kit where you can get all 41 of the one ounces. And right now, like I said, all those kits are on sale. So you want to go to colorsforearth.com and make sure you get those before the end of the week. I think I'll take them off. I've had them. I was only going to have them on sale for a week and then I've left them on. So before I remember to take them off, you might want to get them. Okay. All right. So let's do um, sifting real quick. All right. Let me move some of these out of the way. I want to show you how I do that. And I think what I'll do is put this up here. All right, let me get these off. And I've been on here for quite a while, so I want to make sure that we get this done real quick and let you guys go. It's been a long day. All right, so make sure you have like a piece of paper underneath you. Okay, something that you can reclaim uh, what you don't use. Okay. So as I said, I'm a 96 person. I'm using uh, clear. I prefer to use water clear uh, on my, if I'm doing it over the top of colors. Um, I usually use the just the regular clear between two pieces if it's not something that it's going to show a design. I hope that makes sense. So if I'm putting a clear over this, I would use water clear normally. If I'm just uh, or if I'm sifting it and putting the color behind it. Okay, I would use water clear. But if I'm using two pieces that are opal, like this one is green and white, I don't care what's in between. I'll use just the regular clear. But the water clear in the 96 is the clearest there is. Because if you get too heavy with this one, um, it can fog. Okay, so you want to be careful. So there are a couple of different sifters. This is a bullseye sifter. This is just an enamel sifter that comes in three or four different sizes. This is the largest one of them. Um, I think I got some from Slumpy, some Delphi. Uh, your bullseye dealers will have your bullseye one. Okay, so any of these will work. So I'm going to dip in and get some crit. You would want to make sure that you wear your mask. I'm not, I'm not going to have one on because I'm talking. Okay. So I've got my powder in my sifter. So I do this when I'm out uh, next to my kiln. Okay. Because I don't want to try to carry it because it's in another building. Okay. So I like to stay about five to six inches above it. And I just tap it and let it fall. And as soon as I move out of the way, you'll be able to see how solid that is or how heavy it is. And I'm going to go in the middle. And then if I were capping it, I would go around the edge one more time just because I want it to stay raised on the edge so that if it's raised up, then my bubbles that the air that is in here can get and find its way out through those little particles. Okay, then I would put a piece of clear over the top of it or whatever color I was using. So we'll pretend like this is the uh, transparent color that I was going to put over the top and I would cap it. It would be the same size or slightly larger. Okay. Um, that's the other thing that I didn't say is if you're using the designers and you bring them all the way out to the edge with your stamping, you need to clean off the edge a little bit. It will not seal because it is a non-enamel. And the CCs can be the same way, okay? So you would just remove this, see all that extra? Then I'm going to fold it up and dump it back into my jar, okay? So that's how the sifting is done. And see, now I can go back and finish painting that. So I always uh, have... A, actually, I have like a priority mailbox out there where I sift and it's a heavier, sturdy, and I just use it folded in half. Okay, any questions on the sifting before we move on to something else? No? Okay, 
This is one of the um, color concentrates on fused glass. Um, it's the DVD. It has full length projects on all those six different things, whether it's the stamping. There is one of those PDFs that has my color charts that I've done with the CCs where it's capped, it's sifted, it's not capped. And you can see because some of the purples tend to uh, fade out. And then, uh, and those are, these are on sale also if you want the DVD or the download. And then this is the full length ink technique that Debbie did um, basically in further depth than what I've showed you tonight. And those are out there that you can purchase on our website also. Okay, now I wanted to tell you about uh, cleaning your edges. Hold on. One second, guys. I can't find it. All right. I thought I had a Q-tip out here, but I don't. So if you need to, you can take, let's pretend that this is one of those pointed Q-tips and you would just seesaw it at an angle on just the edge and it removes just a smidge off of there. You always want to check to make sure your edges don't have any product, whether it's an enamel or any of the products I've showed tonight, because it's gonna be there on your glass, okay? So you wanna make sure everything is removed. Check the backs to make sure you don't have anything back there before you fuse also. Okay, I think I am done. And hopefully this has uh, taught you, you know, a little bit about stamping. Let me uh, go back to where I can talk to you. Hi there. Um, hopefully this is good information. I'm sure there'll be more things change as we come out with new things. Um, thanks for joining me and I will see you next Tuesday. Okay. The other thing that we do is, uh, before I forget, on the third Saturday of the month, I have a open Zoom meeting that you register for on the website. The next one is February the 20th. And you can see me, I can see you, and we talk about the products, whatever you, if you have questions, you can submit them ahead of time. And you go to the website, go to education, go to monthly Zoom, find the month you want. You do have to be logged into your account to sign up for it. You scroll down and it says register now. Okay. Did you have something else, Bert, before we sign off? Okay, guys. All right. I'm going to end this and uh, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next Tuesday. Have a good one.